So this question comes from Anonymous. Um, let's see here. Um, I have a problem with the IT field, uh, particularly with software development. I graduated as a programmer from a community college, but found it difficult to find a job as a developer. If I were to look for a C-sharp role, I would find experience for C-sharp, but also a number of other languages or experience needed in technologies that I haven't heard of. It seems like to be a developer, I need to know 20 different things just to be qualified as a developer for a particular language. Because of this, I haven't been able to apply to any jobs because I don't have experience with certain technologies and as a result, I've been working as a help desk analyst since I uh, meet the requirements for that role and as an IT guy who learned things as time went by. Why is this the case and how do I tackle this issue in order to start my career as a developer, right? <laughs> oh, you poor, dumb bastard. You poor, poor, dumb, dumb bastard. Are you really telling me you are not applying for jobs because you don't fit into the mold of the job description? Oh, my boy, my boy, my boy. Oh. And this is one of the problems that we run into in the modern world of technology is the fact of the matter is, is applicants don't seem to understand reality, right? So here, I'm going to explain something to you about how job postings get created. What is the sausage factory of, of, of job postings getting created? So here's the deal. You have an IT manager somewhere, or you have a software engineer manager somewhere, and they have a project to get done, right? So the so C-level executives have dumped this project onto them, and they are trying to get it done, because if they don't get the project done, uh, things are going to go bad for them. They're either not going to get promoted, or they're going to get fired, whatever, right? Again, in the technology world, it's all about getting the job done. And so they get this project dump, dumped on them. They're trying to figure out how to get it done. And what they find out is one of the things they don't have is enough manpower. They need more geeks, right? So here's the deal. So they, they look at it and, and being geeks themselves, they go, I need more geeks. And so they go to the human resources department and they say, human resources person, department, get me more geeks. And then the human resources part, department person looks at, the, at, looks at that, that manager, sips a little bit of a cup of coffee, looks at the manager for a couple more seconds, and then says, what do you mean by a geek? I need more geeks. Well, I understand you need more geeks, but what does that mean? I'm a human resources person. I don't really know what a geek is. What qualifications does this person need? And the IT manager looks at the human resources person and thinks that that human resources person is basically just something a little bit above pond scum and goes, do I have to do everything for you? I have this project to get done. I have 20 people to manage. I have a million dollars on the table. And if I screw up, it's all going to go to hell. I don't have time to do your job. And the human resources person got to pick up that cup of coffee, sip, just stare at the IT manager, be like, okay, I don't know what you need. I don't know the difference between C-sharp developers or Java developers or MCSEs. I don't, I don't know any of that stuff. So you have to sit down and you have to create a job description for me so I can go out and find you one of these geeks. And the IT manager is, God damn. What is wrong with you? I have so much on my shoulders and you want me to write a freaking paper about what I need? And so the human resources person picks up the guy. Okay, I tell you what, I tell you what, I've got a couple of minutes here. You got a couple of minutes? Ah, I guess I've got a couple of minutes. Okay, here, I've got a couple of minutes. Here, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pull out a notepad and we're just gonna talk about what you need and I'll, I'll write up the job description for you. Pfft. Well, that's what I've been saying you should do. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, so you need a developer, right? Yeah, yeah. Of course, I need a developer. I told you I need a developer. Ah, you need a developer. So, um, so how much experience does this person have? <sighs> well, I'd like to have somebody with ten years experience. Oh, okay. So needs ten years experience. Um, okay. So, so what programming languages is this person going to be using? Well, you know we're a Java shop. I mean, obviously, you know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure, I know we're a Java shop. Okay, needs Java. And what else? Well, we're also using, you know, JavaScript or using PHP. Okay, needs JavaScript, needs PHP. Um, and, you know, we've got, we have these uh, iOS apps coming out, so we need somebody that understands uh, iOS development, too. Okay, needs iOS. See, here, here's what happens when that, that, that mash of a... Um, 
of a job description gets created, basically what you have is you have an IT manager throwing out like their wish list of things to find, um, and you have the human resources person basically putting need in front of every item on that wish list. Here's the reality. Nobody fits that description. Nobody fits that description does not exist. So what happens in the real world, in the real world, and this is why I'm calling you a poor dumb bastard right at this second, and I can say that because you said to call you anonymous, right, is what happens in the real world, right? So you get this airy-fairy, cotton candy, fairy dust job description um, that literally nobody in the world can fill. That job description is then what gets posted to Monster and all those other places, right? And then people apply to that job. Now here's the thing, we are in the real world. If we lived in a perfect effing utopia, every time I put out a, a help wanted ad, I would get a whole list of candidates that actually fit that help wanted ad. That's what never, never, never happens. That never happens. What you get is you get a whole mess of candidates that have some of these skills and have some of that skill. Ooh, they know this programming language, but they only have two years experience. This person has 10 years experience, but doesn't know this. And basically you then have to, as, as the employer, as, as the IT manager, you have to sort through this stupid, ridiculous mess um, to figure out who you want to hire. I, this, this, was, uh, this was really driven home to me, again, back when I was at 20, I was 23 and I was doing that whole regional support thing, because uh, we had to hire somebody. And that was the thing, is what we did. One of the reasons I'm qualified in so many things that I am now is because nobody did what we did, again, the networking, the, 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 the desktop support, the telephone systems, build outs, like the stuff that was on our plate just fundamentally uh, encompassed many different uh, professions. And so when we went out and I was responsible for, for wading through the resumes to find people, I mean, that was a thing. It was like, oh, look, this guy knows what the hell Definity is, but has never touched Cisco equipment. Okay, well, this guy's really great at Cisco equipment, but doesn't know telephone systems. And then you sit there and you're like, well, we have the Datacom department back, you know, main headquarters, who doesn't really let us touch the Cisco equipment very much. So, you know, at Cisco, it would be nice to have somebody with Cisco experience, but it's actually not really necessary. I'd prefer to have somebody with telephone systems experience. Okay, so we'll go with this guy, right? And that's how it works. So, um, so if you're not applying for jobs because you don't fit the, the mold, <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm sorry you don't understand how this game is played. You have set yourself back like a year simply because you don't know how the game is played. What you want to do is you want to apply for every job you want to get, right? You want to go out there, you want to look for companies that you want to work for, you want job positions that you want to get, and then you apply for that job description. Because especially being a programmer right now, there truly, truly, there are not enough programmers. There's more than enough Cisco people, MCSE, novice, MCSEs, there's more than enough, there's more than enough of a lot of technical skill sets in the development world. There, frankly, there isn't enough. There's something like a hundred thousand open positions. So the reality is, is you're going to go out, you're going to apply to a lot of these jobs. Um, what you find out is one, sometimes they will take you, um, simply because you're the best damn thing they got. You know, they may want somebody with 10 years experience, right? I want to hire somebody with 50 years experience. I want Somebody that was with Bill Gates when all this stuff originally got coded. I'm not going to get it, right? You know, I can only hire the, the applicants that actually apply. So one of the things you have to think about is when you apply to these positions, um, they can only hire. And that's the thing, like, it, like a lot of you guys don't understand, is money is budgeted out. So like... When all the managers and the C-levels are, are going head to head, right, there's a lot of arguments about how many new employees are going to be hired. And so one of the issues that happens with departments is a lot of times departments will get a window for hiring people. So you'll get a call from, from your, uh, your CIO or your director of IT and they'll be like, you know, listen, uh, I've gotten the go ahead for two technicians. You need to hire them in the next month. And you go, what? Why do we need to hire them in the next month? And it, because it'll be like, because if you don't hire them in the next month, the money gets re-released back into the system and I'm gonna have to go through the same stupid ass argument again. So you have one month to find two people and get them in the slot. So, you know, again, sometimes, you know, there's what we want 
and then you know you're running you're 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 three and a half weeks into the process you haven't found the perfect person but you've got like these resumes in front of you and you're like you know what these two people don't piss me off screw it i've i, I can hire i've got the money to hire them right now if i wait another seven days we lose that money these people got hired, right? So that's the first thing that can happen is just because how things work, you may get hired for the position. The other thing that happens is also realize whenever you're dealing with uh, companies or organizations, more is going on than you see. Uh, we get this view in our, in, for ourselves where we get very tunnel vision. You know, I want this job. I'm applying for this job. Again, if I am an IT director or an IT manager and I am building out a department, guess what? I may have 20 jobs to fill that you may not realize. So you see this one job for like senior C-sharp developer, no way in hell you're actually going to get. The resume comes in, I pick up the resume and go, well, I don't know why the hell this dumbass is applying for this job, but you know what? I do have a mid-level or a junior programmer uh, spot that I need filled. Let me put this over here and I'll call and see if this guy's actually interested in it. Right? So those are all the kind of things that can happen. So, um, so nothing is stopping you from applying. You know, because of this, I haven't been able to apply. No. Because of your own, how you think the world works, you haven't applied. You have been able to. You just have not actually done it. So, uh, so no, go out there, apply for every job that you want, and you will be surprised how far you go. Because, no, no, I swear to you, I swear to you, I see these jobs, nobody has that. Nobody. And the other thing, too, is what you have to realize. Like, I see this a lot. Uh, in the IT world, or I saw this a lot before, and it would, it would make me lose my mind, because uh, like MS SQL would come up a lot, so Microsoft's uh, SQL database system, right? And so you would see all of these job postings of needing experience with MS SQL. So like with me, I'm a rather honest person, so I do have some database experience, <sighs> but it's not... I wouldn't want to have to do a lot of database work in a production environment. You know, if you've got some small little business with like five users, fine, whatever. Um, but, you know, in a pr real production environment, really having to like maintain and do all the maintenance and clean up of the, the, the MS SQL, I just, I just don't know. I just don't have that particular skill set. Um, but that was the funny part is like so many of these jobs, you would see like this experience, MS SQL. And so it's like, oh, I can't do MS SQL. Well, then, then comes to find out, right? And this is what I've seen so many times because MS SQL is the one I know because I've seen this like 20 times and I just want to smack somebody because it's so fucking stupid. So you don't need experience with MS SQL. See, what they have is they have some customized app in the company that connects back into an MS SQL backend. But you never mess with that, right? You install the app. You point it to the database, you may have to clear out some cache or something, but you don't, in fact, ever, 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 ever touch the MS SQL database. That is somebody else's responsibility, somebody that pays more money than you, is responsible for that. You're responsible for, again, installing the custom app and pointing it at the MS SQL. Well, there is, there, there is a massive difference between installing an app and pointing it at a SQL database versus actually having to administer a SQL database. Uh, but you see it time and time and time again. Needs MS SQL experience. You're like, no, you don't. And the reason you see that in the job description is because, you know, the IT manager is all pissed off sitting there with a human resources person. And the human resources person goes, okay, well, we got that custom app right. Right. Is there anything people need to know? Well, it uses an MS SQL back end. Oh, okay, so needs MS SQL, right? So, and this is the problem with communication in the modern world that I try to explain to you. You have a pissed off, egotistical, head up their ass IT manager, and you have a human resources person that hasn't hasn't done the proper preparation in order to communicate. So basically you have a dimwit, the equivalent of a dimwit, and the equivalent of just this egotistical brat, and they're trying to come together to write this job description. And again, this is where I try to communicate to you guys, is this is where communication is important. The human resources person needs to learn more about the jobs that they are supporting, and the IT managers and the other managers need 
to calm down every once in a while, walk into these situations and say, I am going to give the human resources person 30 minutes of honest, calm time. I'm not gonna have other things on my head. I'm not gonna be jacked up on too much caffeine. I'm gonna walk in there. I'm gonna treat the human resources person like they're an actual human being, and we're gonna try to work this out. But again, what you see in the modern world, what happens is this mess between human resources and IT, and yeah. So, uh, so no, apply apply for every single job you want. Nothing is stopping you from applying, and believe me, you might be surprised what you actually get.